is Marshall Huska. I'm 27 years old. I live in Victoria, BC. Um, I'm a brain and throat cancer survivor. And this is my Formula Drift spec build. Um, if you like what you see, then feel free to like and subscribe. Um, if you want to be notified, then click the notification icon. And if you have any questions about anything I've done or how I'm going to do something, then feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So I got some more parts that came in. Uh, here is a two and a half liter surge tank for the fuel system. Um, I plan on running two pumps with AN lines all the way to the fuel rails um, with also a dash eight AN line return. My friend Colby was nice enough to get me a bunch of oil pan bolts. Those are essentially the exact same as ARP bolts, except they're not name branded. Um, thanks Colby, I appreciate that. Here's my new master cylinder for my handbrake. So the benefit of having a smaller master cylinder is essentially there's less fluid in the cylinder. So that enables it to uh, compress more with less effort than uh, trying to compress a whole bunch of fluid. Um, I'm hoping that's going to be able to let me to do maddy brake entries, but we shall see. So this is what the parcel shelf looks like now. Um, I'll be cutting along the red line first just to get the top portion out of the way. Uh, and then I'll go on to figure out what I'm going to do for these side portions here and then cut out the rest all the way to the floor plan. <laughs> floor pan. Okay, so here we got the top part of the parcel shelf off. Um, now I'm just going to make some marks on where I want to cut the rest of the stuff off. Okay, so after much cutting and grinding and like five cutoff discs later, and the parcel shelf is out. Uh, so first issue that I've run into is, as you can see, these little flanges uh, stick up a little too high for me to be able to fit this underneath the shelf here. So I am just going to trim those and then keep at it. All right, so I put up some pieces of tape just to mock up where the Lexan window angle sits. All right, so here is my mock firewall. Um, I had to tape some cardboard onto the edges just so it wouldn't flex very much. Uh, let's see how it fits. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Doesn't fit very well. I am going to trim some of the edges off and make this fit a little bit better. As a side note, my uh, buddy Ian, who I mentioned before, is overflowing with awesomeness. Not only did he donate the Blitz coolant overflow, he also donated this Cusco uh, catch can. So these will both be going in. So I finished mocking up the firewall and I will show you that now. There's a couple things that I didn't do just because they're a little bit unimportant. Um, this area here needs to be capped off in order to actually seal the firewall. I plan on mounting my surge tank um, inside of the sort of radiator cutout along with the coolant overflow. Um, both of them I imagine will be set on some sort of bracket that's built into the firewall like that. Um, I just stacked the surge tank on an oil can to kind of get a rough idea of the height. But yeah, so. I don't know, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. The mock-up, that is. Uh, that flange you see there, made out of cardboard, will have to go all the way around. And I'm probably going to face it the other direction to mount the 
window so it gives more material. Race car stuff. All right, so I was renting my trailer to my buddy Mika, who drives a 5.3 BMW. And while I was waiting, I took the seats out of the car and he also dropped off a little present for me. Ta-da! Up and forward uh, turbo LS headers. I'll be mounting these either like this. This is the front of the motor. Sorry, this is hard to do. Or potentially like this. Um, the elbows for the turbos to attach via V-band um, are in the mail, so hopefully they should be here next week. Uh, when they get here, then I'll be able to actually bolt those headers on and start playing around and see where the turbos are going to fit. Unfortunately, I didn't have my camera running, but I bent up this um, little U out of 1.5 by uh, 095 wall ERW tubing. Um, it is going to mount in between the frame rails there to essentially cradle my fuel cell in formula drift tech rules it states that the fuel cell um carrier for lack of a better term has to be welded to the vehicle rather than bolted let's see if i can jimmy rig this so it's gonna sit roughly there and then i'll weld on flat plates to go from the top of this to the underside of this flange um, so that I can use these bolt holes essentially as mounting points. Here's the template for the mounting plates. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out. I got my mounting plates wire wheeled up so those are all ready to weld. Um, I've got the chassis all wire wheeled up. So I'm going to go grab the welder and get it set up. The welder we have at the shop here is a Lincoln MIGPAC 140, um, typically referred to as a buzz box. Uh, the reason we have this is so that it can be plugged into 120 volt rather than 220 because there's no 220 currently plumbed in. due to inexperience, but I don't think I got a good enough ground. So I'm going to have to grind all that down because that is not acceptable. This turned out well, that one, but once it started kicking the bucket, I should have just stopped. Um, the welding tip ended up getting mucked up. Uh, I grabbed my bag of tips to replace it and turns out they're the wrong ones. So that's all I can do for it tonight, and I hope to be back at it tomorrow. On the way out to the shop today, I stopped off out at the airport to pick up my radiator and uh, see what she looks like. Seems to be packed pretty well. Uh, there's actually another box inside of this one. I do like that they put it in two separate boxes. I've seen radiators packed not this well, so good sign so far, but we'll see how the quality of the actual radiator is. And more cardboard. Okay, so at first glance, nothing's damaged on this side. There's a little bit of Creasing on the fins in a line, but what are you going to do for a hundred bucks? The welds, I mean, they're not the greatest, but it seems to be sealed up pretty well. Comes with a cap, which is nice. 
I can already see it's too small. Actually, I'm happy with that. I put the radiator on some blocks just to, uh, sorry, the shroud on some blocks just to raise it up a bit and split the difference of the overlap of the radiator and it's looking pretty good to me. So here's what the end plates look like when they're finished. Um, it doesn't look pretty, but that's on there nice and solid. I got the welder working a little bit better, put a better ground on it, and wire wheeled it away. What you doing over here, bud? Just uh, just cleaning some stuff up, doing a little metal prep before welding. Nice. Ian, uh, I'm feeling a little nauseous, so I handed the reins over to Ian. He's a body man, and he is just cleaning up um, my welds and making them look nice. I've got the fuel cell retainer tacked in place. It's looking pretty decent. Um, I have the jack under the fuel cell just to support it a little bit, but overall, I think it's going to work out pretty well. Um, I do need to build little standoffs from the tube to support the cell. <laughs> And then figure out some sort of strapping to go underneath it to brace it that way as well. Um, I am exhausted and still feeling a little nauseous, so I'm going to call it quits for the day. I'm pretty happy it's all mocked up. Everything fits well. Um, you can see the radiator sits up just against the fuel cell flange, which is great. That means it's good fitment. Um, yeah, there we go. Back at it again tomorrow.